my name is Austin Hubbard. Um, I'm originally from Sterling, Illinois. Uh, I currently live and train in Denver, Colorado, though. I've uh, been there for about five years now. Uh, I'm a UFC lightweight. It's cool to have you on being, a, you know, a fighter. I think that's something that a lot of people are kind of like enamored because there's not too many people that do it. But a lot of people, yeah. a lot of people either watch it or if they don't watch it, it's still a thing like, oh, my gosh, how do these guys do it? You know, how do these people yeah. put themselves in there? Like, I can't imagine. Like, a lot of people just are kind of like just awestruck by by f- the the thrill of fighting. It seems like there's a lot of thrill to it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's definitely something that, you know, especially as you progress in your career and get to a more like serious level and a higher level. Um, obviously it's something that takes a ton of commitment, uh, a lot of like mental strength as well as, you know, physical, you know, fortitude, a lot goes into it. It's, it's very challenging. It's very re- rewarding also all on the same hand though. Uh, um, you know, it's my life. I love it. <laughs> yeah. So Growing up was was fighting something that kind of took took control of your life from an early age or were you into other sports or not even into sports like how did that go when you're growing up. You know it's it's pretty funny I actually grew up doing a lot of different sports you know from starting from a young age all the way up through high school. And I've always watched MMA and like UFC and boxing, even at a very young age when UFC first came out, I I used to, we used to watch those and, uh, you know, I've always been a fan of the sport for sure. And I've never growing up, I never thought I would, I would actually compete in MMA and be a fighter though. Um, It wasn't until I was 20 years old when I started training MMA and uh, even when I started training it was more uh simply because of a hobby you know something to do um at the time I was I was finished with uh high school I was in college um you know I I, like I said earlier I grew up doing about every sport there was and I've always always been in at least two sports you know or more uh my whole life and then when I went to college um in high school I I wrestled year-round and then I played football um, and the college I ended up going to didn't have wrestling or football. So like I said, I was, I was super bored and wanted something to do and stay active and kind of compete still. So uh, I started training MMA, you know, just for something to do and, you know, stuck with it, ended up falling in love with it. And uh, yeah, then it, it turned into my career. So it definitely worked out, you know. Yeah, that's cool. So growing up, you said you kind of watched the, the the fights and stuff. Was that was that something that your friend group really enjoyed or was it family? How did you get into it? Like who introduced you? to Yeah. It? So my my parents always watched it. I remember even from like a young age, always watching like the big boxing when boxing was, you know, back big and like Lennox Lewis and all those guys. And I, you know, I, we always watched them. And so my my I guess my parents kind of got me interested in it because they always, you know, enjoy watching it and thought it was cool. And, uh, and like I said, though, I, at the, at the, when I was younger, I never thought I would actually start training or thought it'd be something I did. You know, I just, just happened to get into it and, uh, it worked out. Yeah. That's a, that's a man. It's pretty crazy really to think going from just a short period of time of training and not even like you said going into it from a super serious uh, mindset and then going you know being successful did you find your did you find you had like a a very beginning kind of like a natural affinity for it and like a natural athleticism for it yeah definitely people I think when they hear about fighting like mixed martial arts and everything they they they're interested in it but a lot of people are kind of scared off by it just for the physical nature of it. Is the, is the physical yeah. nature side of it something that like, if you just want to go train and, and do that, is that something that you can get around more of, you know, you might still sustain some, some bruises and stuff, but is it something that most people could, could do just as a hobby and not worry about, you know, some serious stuff going on? Yeah. I mean, you, I guess it kind of depends on the, the gym you find uh, to train at and whatnot. Um, But yeah, you could definitely, you know, I I suggest everyone, you know, picks up mixed martial arts or MMA or some form of martial arts. Uh, You know, it's it's always 
first off, it's a great workout and exercise. Um, to me, it's, uh, I tell people this all the time, like you don't have to be a fighter to, to train, you know, it's, it's a very good useful skill to know how to defend yourself. If, you know, if a situation ever arises that you need to defend yourself, but on top of that, it's, it's a fun way to do cardio, you know, and get a good, good workout, um, as well as learn a useful, you know, self-defense skill. So, uh, yeah, like you said, a, a big, a uh, portion of that uh, of injuries and you know what's going to be going on in, in the gym if you don't aren't trying to compete but you want to learn and practice you know find find a good school where they teach you good fundamentals and you you gradually work your way up you know some gyms they'll they'll throw you to the dogs right away and kind of let them knock your block off to see see if you're made for it. There's plus and minuses of that approach, but, uh, you know, I would suggest kind of starting slow and learn the fundamentals before getting, getting in, you know, the live sparring scenarios and whatnot, and be mindful of, you know, your, your the people you're going with and, uh, things like that. But yeah, you could definitely, you know, pick it up and learn it and train it and not ever intend on competing. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. And like I said, I think it's something a lot of people think about. And, and personally, I think about it and I've actually wanted, wanted to start it up for a while and just, you know, yeah. haven't, haven't committed to it. Haven't yeah. really to just honestly just walk in somewhere. Cause that's the, yeah. I think the hardest part. A lot of times is just taking that first step, but yeah, 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 exactly. You know, I, that's how I started. I, I, my cousin actually convinced me to, you know, go to our, at the time, the local MMA gym and where I was living and where I'm from, uh, it's called combat zone. And initially I was just going there to help the fighters with wrestling, um, and wrestling, you know, running wrestling practice and whatnot. And then after about two weeks of doing that, I was like, man, I want to start training MMA. I want to start doing that. And then I, I started doing, I just full fledged jumped into training MMA and, haven't looked back since. So you mentioned kind of the, uh, the workout aspects of you know, mixed martial arts and everything like that, but was, was training like physical training, working out, was that something that you, that in high school was a big emphasis for you or, or was your high school not really there yet as far as strength and conditioning goes? Yeah. Yeah. So my, you know, I, I grew up, my, my family is like very competitive as far as like my my cousins and my siblings and everything. And, uh, you know, all of them are all for the most part athletes that competed on various levels being high school, all the way up to the professional level, you know, it, sports has always been big in our family. So yeah, it's just kind of it, strength and conditioning has always been something that I have been used to and working out is always something I've been used to. Um, and it's something I enjoy doing, you know, it started at, you know, at an early age with athletics and everything that comes with ath athletics. It was uh, an easy adjustment lifestyle for me because I was kind of already living that lifestyle as far as like the strength and conditioning and working out aspect of it. Gotcha. And during your high school years, where did you find yourself kind of in that uh, more, I guess, upper echelon percentage wise of like, the the athletic kids in your class or did you were you just kind of middle of the pack or how did you fall as far as just like being an athlete yeah uh you know I I feel I feel like I've always been a, a pretty athletic person um and I've always done well in athletics and I feel like I've been more on the upper echelon of of the pack of uh, when it comes you know the teams I was on and whatnot never you know the best or the top guy or anything like that but in the upper pack I believe um you know honestly one of the driving factors too when I started doing MMA and whatnot was you know I I did fail to reach some of my athletic goals I've set for myself you know throughout high school and whatnot and uh, that kind of drove my competitive edge uh, and brought it with me into MMA. And, you know, I, when I started doing MMA and, uh, you know, I fell in love with the sport and training and all that. But I also was like, I'm not going to be done like competing and 
working for this until I reach, you know, my goal. And I, I fortunately have done that and I've readjusted my goals and whatnot and, you know, plan on keep climbing, but uh, yeah, uh, you know, failure in, in the previous goals I've set for myself has, has uh, definitely driven me to get to the point where I am today for sure. Yeah, that's uh that's pretty cool. I think a lot of people would be, it would be, uh, can relate to that kind of motivation, but yeah. what kind of, uh, what kind of time frame was it between when you started training MMA and, and when you were like, you know, I might be kind of good at this and maybe I should take this seriously kind of thing. Yeah. So, um, as an amateur, I think I, I like I said, I started, uh, training when I was 20, uh, I turned pro at 23 or 24, somewhere in there. I don't, uh, remember exactly, but, uh, so as an amateur, I, I got 10 amateur fights um, and I, I finished damn near every single one besides uh, two. I was I was nine in one as an amateur, almost all finishes. I had a very, you know, successful amateur career. And, you know, as I was progressing, I, I got to the point where I pretty much beat all the regional amateur, you know, people that I could could, you know, challenge myself against. Um, so at that point I was like, all right, well, I might as well go pro and start making money. And even at that point, I was still, you know, in the mindset of, you know, I just, I was enjoying doing MMA and loving the sport and no real like idea of like, oh, I'm going to be in the UFC. I'm going to, this is going to be my career, like, and all that. So it wasn't until I was four and oh, I had all, uh, finishes to start my pro career where I was like, you know, I, I am pretty good at this and I, I definitely love training and doing it. And, um, you know, and at that point, it, which has been it's been five years now, uh, where I decided well, I'm, this is going to be my career. I am going to, you know, give it my all and see where it can take me. At that point, I, I decided to move out to Denver, Colorado and train with a, a world-class team. Um, and I've been there for, like I said, five years now, and it's been a, a great um, decision and I'm, I'm very fortunate and uh, grateful that I, I do get to you know do what I love every day for a job now and it's you know it's worked out great and I love it <laughs> yeah that's a that's pretty cool so when you move to from amateur to pro what kind of uh, what kind of differences are there I guess not necessarily in the fighting itself but just in everything else that's involved with it for me I feel like I've always had a a very like professional approach to, um, you know, MMA and training. Uh, I know people who hardly train. I know people who only work on the areas they want to work, uh, or as they don't like push hard through, you know, hard stuff and look for easy ways out. You know, that's never, never been something I've done. Um, so for my transition to amateur to pro, I felt like, nothing really changed. Um, you know, I, I, I had good success all the way getting into the UFC. You know, I was, I was 10 and two at that. When I got into the UFC, I, I had as a, on the regional scene, uh, as a professional, I had four different professional titles, all in different promotions, all in different States. Um, the LFA being the most, you know, prestigious one. And, ultimately the one that got me into the UFC, uh, you know, so I, I was kind of top dog, you know, so to speak on the regional scene as a pro, pro before getting into the UFC. And uh, for me that, you know, the biggest thing since turning pro and now being in the UFC is uh, just a, a mind sh mindset shift really in a refocus. Um, Cause you know, one of the things I learned before getting to the UFC or since getting into the UFC is it doesn't matter at all like what you did before you got into the UFC is it completely almost like resets everything once you get into the UFC uh you know it's almost like a rebuilding phase uh relearning you know kind of you you're at the top you know and then you get into the UFC then it's you're back down here and it's a restart and you know it's just a, a same process a little bit of you know growing learning you know, all that, all those sort of things. So that would probably be my, my biggest thing from, you know, being pro and 
uh, you know, amateur to pro and then pro to USC type of type of mindset thing. And as far as like attracting that attention from the UFC, is that something where they they just kind of watch you from a distance and then you all of a sudden have, you know, a call or whatever it is? Or are you are you kind of like in contact with them along the way and they're they're kind of there saying, you know, oh, if you you know, if you win a few more, then we're going to, you know, really start to maybe bring you in or how does that work? So for me, I feel like maybe it took a a little longer than uh, I would have liked, you know, but looking back, it, it all worked out how it was supposed to. And I, I'm grateful for everything and how it all worked out. But I, I never had a manager actually up until or worked with the management company or anything along those lines up until I, after I won the LFA belt. Once you win the LFA belt, I, you pretty much guaranteed a shot in the a uh, bigger organization so I knew it was only a matter of time after winning that belt that I would have my ap- opportunity and then at the time uh, I started working with uh, Bollingy Group with uh, Lloyd Pearsons is, is my agent's name and uh, he went over to Vayner Sports so now I followed him over I'm with Vayner Sports now uh, is my management company and uh, Lloyd Pearsons is is my agent and he's he's awesome he he helps me out getting contracts and all that good stuff uh you know helps me out greatly so you know just to keep winning fights is is the best way I could you know describe getting to the UFC you know I'm not a very controversial I'm not very like I don't talk crap to people I'd rather uh you know just be a good person inspire people to be the best they can be and let my performances kind of speak for me and that route uh unfortunately sometimes takes longer to get your name out there and uh as far as you know the people who talk all crazy all the time and disrespectful you know unfortunately that that does that stuff does sell and but I'll never I, I, I couldn't ever, you know, bring myself to be that person, <laughs> no matter how, how hard I tried. I just don't have that in me, you know what I mean? So I just keep on my route. And like I said, just keep winning fights and, and everything you want will be undeniable in time, you know what I mean? So yeah. just got to work hard and keep pushing. Yeah, that's cool. You talked about the uh, kind of your personality and how, you, how you're not one to – do all the trash talk and all this stuff but do you feel the pressure to do that from any anywhere around you or is it just kind of like you know keep doing what you're doing no you know especially um you know coming from elevation fight team I feel like you never really ever hear anyone on that team you know being the loud mouth disrespectful type of person you know to gain publicity you know that's just how we are uh we're just you know I it's just not my thing you know I, I'm not hating on people who do it you know make it how you gotta make it but it's just not me I can't do it <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not good at that so yeah. I'll stay in my own lane <laughs> I hear you so so would you say yeah. that you're you're just more laid back than that or are you just yeah, not just not your yeah. thing is to be kind of trash talk. I'm I'm very laid back person. I'm very non confrontational. I I get you know I could care less what someone has to say. Don't get me wrong. If if you know you're you're coming onto my my page or coming after and saying bad things about, I care more so about like if you're saying bad things about people I personally know and I'm like am friends with, like friends, family. I'm those type of levels of relationships that I have with people and if you're trying to like come at them or be super disrespectful to you know my friends or family that's more so would draw out you know a response out of me than someone just talking crap to me I I don't care because I know that person will never say it to my face and if they did I know I would do what I wanted to them and they couldn't (laughs) do anything about it so uh, you know, it, it always cracks me up, you know, when trolls try to try to troll you and, you know, get get a rise out of you and talk crap about you. It, like, 
it just cracks me up <laughs> i can't imagine all the stuff yeah. <laughs> that you might like, get but man yeah yeah that is funny i feel like when you're more into i guess to a certain degree they're they're like you said there are people who use it as like a selling tool but for the people who yeah. just like are that way i think it's more somewhere of like a uh they're just not confident in, i guess what they and who they are a little bit i think that's maybe a little bit of why that that's how they respond yeah is there anything else that you just aren't you know you're not super thrilled with as far as just like the the world of fighting goes i mean is there certain aspects you don't really enjoy that you that you still have to kind of go through anyway i guess the le- most unenjoyable aspect of fighting is is kind of cutting weight and all that uh it would it would be nice you know to to get some more weight classes and um kind of spread it out a little bit more um whether that's gonna happen I don't know and I mean I I I make weight I've never missed weight it's not always the easiest but it's never like a near-death experience either so I would say definitely that's the worst part of fighting but it is what it is it's just part of the sport (laughs) yeah I hear you do you think that people that a certain fighter might be more I guess successful if their natural body weight kind of leans closer to that um that 155 or whatever weight class that it is then if you have to yeah. kind of move the weight around yeah and i mean you see that on on a few occasions where uh fighters who move up a weight class and they find great success you know dustin poirier to name one uh Gilbert Burns, you know, another, and, you know, there's a, there's a more than a few out there who have done that where, you know, they, they cut the less weight and they feel better and they win, win more fights and do well. But I mean, on an occasion you see the people who move up and don't do as well and then have to go back down. So, you know, it just kind of depends on your body type. I feel like, and how much weight you're cutting and, all of those sorts of things and how you're cutting the weight to determine like what's best for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think a lot of people who watch it don't, don't really don't a don't have that experience, but also don't really take that into account when they're watching a fight and maybe the yeah. person that they're either rooting for or not rooting for is performing in a different way than normal. And they're just thinking, you know, whatever else that they're thinking. And in reality, it's just, you know, maybe potentially the hardships of that kind of that weight cut or whatever else they were going through. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, You know, especially people who don't, they're fans of MMA, but they don't actually train or compete in MMA. I don't think they fully understand what goes into not only competing in MMA, but to compete at the USC level, which is the highest level you can compete even from my last fight, you know, you always have some DMs from people talking, talking shit, you know, and they just have no idea the, the how stressful and how demanding both physically and mentally uh, it is to do this for a job. It's rough at times, but I, I wouldn't change it. I think if, if the people competed who say they're fans or even try cutting weight and cutting and training and doing the things we do, I think they would have a lot more appreciation for what we do. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's so much that goes into, I guess, really any sport just behind the scenes. But, but I think fighting is, is something that's, I guess, becoming more popular. It's not necessarily new, but it's becoming, you know, more and yeah. more popular. So I think people are getting into it at, at a pretty good, at a pretty good rate. Um, yeah. So I think people are just still, understanding really what it's all about from from both perspectives of the fan and as you know trying to I guess connect with athletes more and I feel like the UFC it's still at this stage where the you can connect still a little bit with the with the athletes and you can yeah um, the athletes are 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 still able to kind of be themselves a little bit more they can it's a little bit more personable I feel yeah yeah I mean I agree with that it's definitely becoming more mainstream from where we were a few years ago to where it is now I feel like it's grown and it is way more mainstream than ever before and you know you're starting to see see real 
superstars em- emerge, you know, in the sport, you know, Conor Gre- McGregor being, being uh, the biggest one where you see these other like superstars from other, you know, sports or actors or actresses or musicians or anything really where they're actually following MMA now and the sport and like knowing these people and, you know, all that sorts of things. Uh, which is also, you know, contributing to the growth. Um, and I think it's, it's awesome. You know, it's really cool to uh, kind of be a part of that, but, you know, fighters are, are just regular people like all, all the rest of us, you know, fighting's like a, a different, really different from other sports, you know, as far as you don't necessarily have to be like some freak athlete or be the biggest person or the strongest person or the fastest person that really makes I feel like UFC fighters different well not just UFC fighters but all fighters uh different as far as like comparing them to other athletes and we are kind of more of regular people you know what I mean so to speak uh compared to like you know LeBron James who's this freak athlete he's huge he's fast and all those sorts of things and I think another aspect is kind of like so many sports especially popular American sports where it's a, it's mostly like team sports and you follow a yeah. team. Most people are like, Oh, I like the, you know, like the Lakers or I like, you know, whoever, yeah. like Chicago bears or whatever. But you know, in, in fighting, it's like, Oh, you get to follow this single person or this whatever yeah. group of people around. And it's like, I kind of get a good feeling for almost who they are in a way, just based on, you know, w- watching what they do in and outside of the, of the octagon. And it's kind of, you get yeah, a different perspective. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Since you got into the UFC and since you've had some time to to kind of really fill things out, was there any shock or any like, oh wow, can't believe that's the way it is in the in the UFC? I thought it would be kind of different. Is there anything that you were surprised by? Not entirely. Um, you know, obviously there's there's a major adjustment as far as well for me, anyways. Probably not everyone. You know, just kind of adjusting my my mental mindset. Uh, in my approach to you know the fights and whatnot I had to make you know some adjustments there but as far as being in the UFC and then kind of it being totally different than what I expected that's not entirely the case you know I it I I believed in my skill I believed in my work ethic that I I do feel I belong you know and can be very successful and everything else. The biggest thing is just how to adjust my my mindset, my mental approach to to uh, fight night and things along those lines. Gotcha. Kind of just focusing more on it to yeah. be more specific. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. And kind of along those lines, like being, I guess, at the highest level and having that kind of opportunity, do you feel like it's at any certain point you've had to kind of like slow yourself down and be like, okay, let me appreciate this more or let me humble myself a little bit. Has there any, has there been any times where you've had to do any of that? Yeah, a little bit for sure. I consistently have, have had great, you know, training camps and just having not necessarily because of these great training camps and feeling really good and confident, I kind of overlooked the fight a little bit and like, think out of like, okay, I'm going to win this fight, do this fight, win this much money. Like, you know, the, all those things that come with uh, being in the UFC and like actually making a living off of this and all those things, you know, I just kind of was getting ahead of myself sometimes and not being as mentally focused as I needed to be uh, fight night. And I really zeroed in on that. And I've put a ton of focus in on my, in my mental side of, of the sport and of my mental approach to, you know, fight night and things like that. I've been working with a mental coach now for about nine months since losing that Joe Selecki fight. I knew I needed to make some sort of mental change in my approach or and whatnot. I started working with a mental coach uh, by the name of Salt Garrison is his name. Meet with him once a week, as well as reading or listening to a ton of different like mental training type of books just putting a lot of extra attention and into the mental side and my mental approach and focus and and all those things and I I felt 
really happy with with the results I got from doing all that work you know I felt super focused and ready to fight you know on April 17th so I'm definitely going to continue that work and all that and keep growing and keep learning and keep on winning hopefully (laughs) yeah for sure man Um, it's funny you mentioned the mental aspect of like mental training because I was talking to uh, an Olympian actually on this podcast just like a few weeks ago and that was like one of his main points was like the the mental training aspect and hiring different people and talking to different people and just learning. Yeah. He was telling me about a book he was reading and it's really interesting to, because so many people just think, Oh, you know, sports it's so physical. And you, if you're you know, yeah. an athlete, you can just roll on by, but it's, it's, it's so interesting the, the how the mind really can be either your friend or your foe when it comes to your performance. Absolutely. For me, I know uh, addressing that issue and, and making it, not an issue, but a strong point now, uh, I feel like is, is career defining for me. Um, if, if I think I, if I didn't, I kept going on without addressing the, the mental lapses and shortcomings and lack of focus on certain points of where it needed to be, when it needed to be there, that my, my career probably wouldn't, turn out is what I wanted to turn out with the mental work I'm I'm just real confident in that um it's gonna carry me a longer a much longer way than if it I didn't do any of that so um it's it's huge I I firmly believe in in the mental training aspect not in just if you're an athlete but also just in life you know uh how you approach your life and and react to certain things that happen and everything else, you know, that goes into your mood, you know, and your thought process, and it could benefit you in multiple areas, not just, you know, being an athlete. Yeah. And I think there's so much conversation on like mental health right now, but we, we forget that there's like another side to it when it comes to the, to the mental side, you know, you can actually train your mind yeah. And, you know, mental health is obviously important not to negate it because it's like physical health. But but I don't think just talking about physical health or mental health is important. You obviously have to physically train and like you said, mentally train as well, even if you're not an athlete, too, because, yeah. you know, there's just so many there's so many different barriers in life and different things that you can actually overcome if you are. Because I feel like when you're mentally there, it gives you that that real control over your situation to another level. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I agree. So you kind of mentioned it a little bit, but, but kind of like in the UFC versus let's just say football, you know, you, you start your season, you have your 16 game schedule and it's like, okay, I know, I know who my opponents are. I know I have this plan. We, we have this weekly thing we got to do, but in the UFC, it's so much different, you know, it could change in a split second. So yeah, how do you, how do you handle that kind of like, I guess, unknown and as far as like who and and what to prepare for. I mean, you, you obviously know at a certain degree, but, but you don't really have yeah. a long-term plan. Um, you know, uh, I think it is a very important just to be uh, as well-rounded as you possibly can. Um, so when a situation arises to where, say, you get, whether it be a last minute or you get a full camp, either way, uh, you get a, a striker, for example, uh, you know, being ready to in and believe in your own abilities and training that because because you put the work in, you're just as confident to fight a striker as you are a grappler and vice versa. Um, so for me, you know, I'm, I'm training all areas of MMA, you know, and I, I believe that I'm perfectly capable to take the fight wherever the fight needs to go and and so that would be like my biggest thing is just be as best you can at being well-rounded and a true mixed martial artist yeah and when it comes to like your training do you if you have like a full camp and you have this this you know full opportunity to prepare do you is it is a is it a mix between like training your own skills and then training 
against what they offer? Yeah, I mean, I, I never completely abandon, you know, who who I am as a fighter um, and what I bring to the table. But obviously we do make, you know, small adjustments to um, adjust to their strengths and, uh, you know, work up a game plan. And usually, you know, it's something small like footwork, you know, use this type of footwork when he's doing this or, you know, if he's moving this direction, move that direction, that type of thing. It's never like, I'm never going to fully change, you know, what I do best and who I am as a fighter to accommodate to them or try to beat my opponent. You know what I mean? Like I said, it's, it's just small adjustments. It could be as simple as keeping your hands high, you know, blocking or uh, doing a return, like counter right away. Uh, you know, nothing, nothing like super huge, but it's the small details, you know. I think it's so interesting, the training aspect, because you spend all this time training and then there's, uh, you know, the fights, such a short amount of that, that time frame. But yeah, do you have any like, rituals or anything like weird or kind of that you do during your training or that you don't like do a certain thing during your training is there anything that you have found works for you you know uh, I guess one of the things that I I really worked on and and got from my mental coach was uh you know to treat every practice as if it's a competition and compete as if it's practice. Uh, you know, that was one of my mantras was uh, compete like our practice sites, a competition uh, compete like it's practice. So every day, you know, no matter the workout or the type of training I was going to do that day, um, I, I, you know, visualized when I would arrive, you know, the bus ride over to the, the apex uh, the warm up. I'm getting ready for the fight. You know, the start of the fight. I'm, I'm visualizing all of these things in my head and constantly putting myself in in fight night and visualizing and relating it to what I was doing that day for every practice. You know, so come. You know, it's really weird. This this last fight. Uh, I I sometimes get super nervous. And I sometimes don't feel anything at all. And um, most times I don't get too nervous, but I got like super nervous the day of the fight all the way up until I got to the arena. The second I got to the arena, I had no like jitters, no nervousness. I was completely comfortable. I was focused. I felt great. And I think that's largely because I put myself in that mentally in that space literally for 10 weeks or more straight multiple times throughout the day. Um, you know, just visualizing that night and every aspect of that night. So when I got there, like I said, it, I was more nervous than I usually am before, you know, it, it took place, which, uh, the nerves are, are necessary to optimal, optimal performance. Uh, you know, everyone gets nerves. So you just have to, have to make sure they're they're working with you instead of against you so the fact that I was putting myself there mentally so often throughout camp and creating that uh comfortability in, in that moment and the focus in that moment uh I think helped me greatly and is definitely something I'm going to continue go, doing going forward yeah I think that's an interesting area like the the emotions and the the th- what you feel going yeah. in to a fight and like even just stepping in and getting ready to fight stepping in the octagon did you feel like your first UFC fight was more like nervous and more just emotions or was it your first professional fight where you might have felt that more I don't know <laughs> you know uh a lot of my fights I didn't feel you know too much going into them sometimes you get really really strong nerves and like I said sometimes you don't get any and so I've had great results with having big nerves and then I've had horrible results with bad nerves and then I've had great results with nothing at all and I've had horrible results um with nothing at all you know feeling nothing at all so I think 
really it it, it all just kind of depends and for me to consistently put myself there in in fight night uh mentally and visualize it constantly that for me is was huge you know what i mean it made uh all the difference in the world uh, me personally the fight before mine all the way up to like the first two minutes is was i always hated that that was that was like the most nervous you know you know getting the fight training camp none of that really none of the nerves really hit me up until like i get to the venue and then you start warming up and then the fight or two before yours that was like the strongest nerves you know what i mean and yeah. uh i think i i kind of mentally skipped that area a lot um just because i'm like you hate that area right so why why would i put myself there it wasn't ever something that i connected you know and thought was important <laughs> uh, i was always looking forward to just getting the fight started and get going and get it over with and then you know all that good like i said the major change that i made was actually putting myself in those moments and then enjoying them and embracing them and not like thinking of it as some bad thing, you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, I think that for me was huge. And you mentioned like getting it over with, is there like an emotional release after you, after you're done with the fight as well? Oh yeah. Uh, definitely. You know, training is, is hard. Uh, training is fun though for me. So it can be very stressful at also, you know what I mean? Like this is, this is our livelihood. It's very hard. And I know people do it, but it's hard to have a full-time job and then also doing this full-time. But in a lot of cases, it's, it's necessary uh, before you make it to this point. Unfortunately, the pay in MMA just isn't, isn't like huge. You know what I mean? You're not going to get rich right away doing this so it is a little bit of a struggle or not of a struggle but well definitely a struggle you know training all day and then having to scrape by and uh make ends meet to pay your bills and you know all that good stuff but it adds a little more pressure onto you to perform you know what i mean and and conquering that pressure was also something I needed to work on you know that I worked on with my mental coach was how to really I've always been really hard on myself and put all these pressures on myself thinking I need to do this I need to do that or this has to happen for this and you know just letting go of all that that nonsense that I can't necessarily always control but thinking I have have to control or whatnot uh, was also a big thing for me Do you think someone can train their way into the UFC or do you think it takes something else? Or do you think it takes, you know, uh, a little bit of a, of a genetic edge or a little bit of, of, of something else to push you to that next level? Yeah. I mean, not, you know, what is there probably millions of MMA fighters in the world and there's what probably less than probably two grand let's say in the whole entire UFC roster between all the weight classes so clearly not just anyone's gonna make it to the UFC you know what I mean no matter how hard you try so I think there there is to a point you you do need some you know mental strength and will to to with endure all the challenges to get to the UFC but you also need to have some sort of you know athletic ability and if not a ton of athletic ability you need to be that much more of a hard worker you know what I mean MMA like I said earlier is you don't necessarily need to be like the super freak athlete but you do need to work really hard you know what I mean it's 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 you need to be mentally strong you can gain all that through training and consistency and all that and make it to the UFC, but you just got to be strong. You got to really want it. You know what I mean? And if, if you're mentally strong and you really want it, chances are you can make it happen, but it definitely, 
obviously doesn't happen for everyone and only a small percent actually make it to the UFC in, in their life and, and be able to make that walk. Uh, so I think it's kind of both, you know what I mean? Kind of moving to like the, the, the big picture for your career. Do you have this goal? I mean, obviously you probably want to continue winning, but do you have this, this kind of broad goal about this is what I really want to achieve within my fighting career? Obviously everyone who you, who's in this sport, well, mostly I would say everyone wants to be successful. They want to, and obviously I, I want to be successful. I want to win every fight I get in. I want to be a champion. You know what I mean? That's, I would say most people's who fights goals. Um, so yeah, clearly those are my goals as well. You know, I, I kind of changed my mind on, on setting goals, you know, a little bit ultimately. Yes. I want to win fights. Ultimately. Yes. I want to be champion. One of the books that I, you know, I finished not too long ago was the code to the extraordinary mind. And in, in that book, you know, one of the chapters that kind of really hit me and I resonated with me and I liked was the, the dangers of setting goals. You know what I mean? And, you know, there's the whole chapter and the whole book. So I'm just touching on it very, very lightly, but you know, I, I just want to take one fight at a time. I, I, I want to leave my best effort in the cage every single time I fight. That is ultimately my goal, you know, when I fight is knowing I, I left and did everything I could to that I could in the fight, whether if I, I can stand losing a fight if the guy is simply better. What just drives me crazy is if I lose a fight to someone I knew I could be because I didn't necessarily leave my best effort in there or perform at my best. That's what I, that just kills me. You know what I mean? Um, so obviously, yes, I want to be a world champion. I want to be win every fight. I'm, I, but my biggest goal is kind of, you know, just one fight at a time and leaving my best effort in there. You know what I mean? Like if you're trying to set all these goals, you know, and you're giving yourself these timelines, that's kind of just putting extra uh, stress on yourself to, to meet these goals not only that is like if if you don't meet them in the time you think you met them then what's that also do to you mentally you know what I mean so I just focus on one fight at a time now and my biggest goal in each one of those fights is making sure I I leave my best effort in the cage each and every time yeah I think it's a cool perspective a cool way to look at it taking it yeah. day by day you know rep by rep if you will and just yeah you know giving it all you got it because that's really all you can do and especially yeah. in a sport like the UFC where there's so much uncertainty anyway it's you know yeah. it's tough to put a whole lot of uh future future stock in and what other fighters might do and what the organization itself might do so yeah I think that's a that's definitely a, a I think a unique perspective to uh to take so yeah I think that's really cool. yeah but man it was a uh, I really do appreciate you coming on. It was cool. To, yeah, no problem, man. It was cool to talk to you. And uh, if you just want to let the people know, you know, where they can find you, where they can uh, learn more about you, that'd be cool. Yeah. So my Instagram is is where I post most. Um, uh, so my Instagram is Austin Hub Two uh, Bs One Five Five. Um, same as my Twitter. I I don't use Twitter as much as I probably should. Uh, I do have a fight page on Facebook. If you want to follow that as well, it's Austin Thud Hubbard is my my Facebook fight page. You can find most of my my stuff and content on uh, Instagram though, and that's Austin Hub One Five Five is my handle. Awesome, man. Well, I really appreciate it. It was it was cool to uh, like I said before, pick your brain and get to uh, get get a little bit of background on you, who you are, and. In the in the how you handle it, how you approach the the game and the in life, really, it's it's it was pretty cool. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for having me, man.